that they are some of the best arts that we see around us. The Western model is more individualistic. You are Michelangelo, so you know this is Michelangelo. You know Sistine Chapel, you, you, know, you know this thing. But he also had hundreds of other artists work with him. Yes, like the temple. Who you don't know. Uh, so yeah. the temple. So the, I think, I think the, I, the basic problem really is uh, what I see. Now that we are getting into the same kind of a marketization or the globalization mode, where the individual has become more important than the community. What you see today, those problems will continue. Thank you. I think I know Thank where you so much. So now, you know, may I invite uh, anybody who is an uh, observation, a comment, uh, a question, anything. Because I would really like to extend this. Um, Gita? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, I Chatin sir, you have talked about that divers are artists and you have to look at the IT and the end of it. And this is a bad thing. I was a student when I was a student. I was a student with Kota Divers. I worked with Kota Divers for about 10 years. And I was saying that I was tired that I was tired that I was tired that I was tired that I was tired. Ultimately, उनके खटियाँ change करवाई और तब वो सूट पड़ा है और इस तरह के खटे तमाम विवर्स के साथ हैं तमाम मर्डर्स के साथ हैं क्योंकि नई generation पढ़ना चाहती है एक-एक दो-दो बच्चे जब हम family planning की बात करते हैं तो वे forward क्या है? Yeah, I think we are discussion is going in the wrong thing. That was that there is future for art. We are not uh, we are not gospel makers, you know. So what I'm saying is a practitioner would have said. I have deep interest in the tradition and contemporary both. Even certain kind of work I may not do, but when I see it's exciting, I enjoy it also. But if I tell you, uh, in, in Venice Biennale, in 1978, I had participated, and 71 in the Paris Biennale. In the Paris Biennale, there were 50 mirrors like this room, and women were taking all their clothes off and putting on and there was a reflection. Okay, this is one. In Venice Biennale in 78, there were two things. There was a very dear friend of mine who was a painter from Israel, eh? Minashe Kadishman, who used to paint, uh, who paints uh, sheep uh, heads only. And he's like the Picasso of Israel. And he brought 10, 20 sheep into the real sheep, put some color on it and let them loose. So there was a sensation. Kindly mark this very carefully. And there was a Mark Boyle, a painter from England, who had a large felic of 15 feet on a jeep went around the Biennale. So in the evening, I knew Minasha uh, Kadesh, uh, I didn't know this young man. So I said, What kind of work you do? He laughed. He said, I don't do this, I paid. I did it only for the Venice Biennale to draw attention of the press and the public. Likewise. So, what is happening in the West, it's a, it's a, what you call, it's what, what something is finished, what you call, uh, whatever, you know, so you know, everybody is making, a, in New York you have a copy of the Venus, somebody doing on that, you know, uh, this is a spent force. So, when I'm saying, Kamala uh, uh, Devi said something fantastic, he said, you know, Jati, the sari will survive, the weavers will survive of our country, because women were sari. What a simple, beautiful expression. Likewise, if we have the Chahidi, so let's look at the contemporary situation. If you buy the diya, you can use it as an ashtray, you put jana, so the potter will make more diya, and also oil lamp baby. But 99% of the craftspeople, what they call craftspeople, they are real artists of our country. Our contemporary, you know, in our schools and art colleges and architecture colleges, vernacular architecture, traditional arts and craft is not taught. The syllabus is wrong key. So that is the fear. So it's not optimism and pessimism at play. I've also been a professor, so I understand this. I give up teaching. Because nobody wants to learn art. Do you know all over the country, the art colleges, the boys and girls, and more girls go, those who are not doing well in their studies, to so jaate thoda art baat siklo, to shaadi ho jayega. You know, so anyway, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> May I add uh, two, three, your attention to two, three facts. One, 
this country still has perhaps the largest craft population that any other country in the world has. We have 1% of our population involved in crafts, is still, in spite of all the difficulties and what we have. The second issue was raised about culture policy. When I came to Delhi in 92, one of the first tasks given to me by the then culture secretary, I came as a joint secretary, you have to draft a national culture policy. So I made a <coughs> draft. Then I said, but let us involve the whole artistic community, cultural community. So we had a national colloquium on that. We had two reports of parliamentary standing committee, or whatever it is called, on that. Then came, this was done during Arjun Singh's time, then came Mother of Sindhya, whose main job was to undo everything that Arjun Singh had done. So he decided that it's no longer necessary to have a cultural policy. So the idea was given up. Then, when Jagmohan became Minister of Culture, since I happened to know him, uh, and I ran into him, uh, Jagmohan, yes, he was Minister of Culture, and I reminded him, both verbally and wrote him a letter, that maybe it would need upgrading, revision, etc. Nothing happened. About five years ago, when Abhijit Singh Gupta was Secretary Culture, another committee was formed to look at the national culture policy. We made another draft. It was said there were ideologically there were problems. One was the misunderstanding, which even people like Ulam Sheikh had that misunderstanding, that how can a state, how can government prescribe policy for culture. Our argument was that government is not prescribing policy for culture. Government is only prescribing policy for itself. What role the state should play, its institutions should play, because after all, you have these institutions, you have the National Museum and National Gallery and the National Academy and this, that and the other. So there is an unspoken policy which is not in the public domain, which meant that if you have a policy document, which only, and I said culture in this country, Vidami state, is only 10%. So the rest of the 90% culture is created by individuals and communities, etc. And the government will have no role. So what was decided? That there should be a small uh, statement and there should be a plan of action. The plan of action was prepared and all that. Again, the government changed and then the matter rested. I reminded again, because I became chairman of the Nerit Kala Academy, so I reminded the government that there was a national culture policy document. Let us have a look at it again, because all these issues of ideology, I mean, technology, this, that, and the other, you have things which have seen, have changed, documentation, etc. Nothing happened. There is a possibility that if a ideologically very uh, strong, strong robust. robust government comes, <laughs> it might try to put its own ideology <coughs> through this kind of a document. But on the other hand, there are enough cultural, I mean, enough uh, public institutions that the government cannot get away with. So, the policy document was saying that this 0.1% over a period of time should be raised to 1%. Sure, can, I, can I interrupt you and ask you a question? Yeah. How would cultural policy <coughs> impact three issues? One, this enormous imitation that is happening in the arts uh, that we're deriving from the West. Two, how would you uh, stop art from becoming this, you know, cockeyed investment product? And how would you stop the arts from becoming a sure product? How would cultural policy... Cultural policy, why can cannot address any of these? Any of these. So, 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 so I'm not saying that cultural policy will solve your problems. I'm only... Because why, of this... Why are we going on about 
cultural policy. <coughs> maybe so somebody it, asked. The organizer asked. But maybe the answer, maybe the answer is that there may be a certain role for the government of the taxes that it collects to allow a certain amount of seed money that may be useful to creating some sort of infrastructure that the arts might need. And that is the end of the cultural policy. Why are we making this into such a big thing? It's not so simple. Yes. 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 Culture will always require support from outside, whether it is veterans like they are used to be the emperors before who would be able to spend the money, or it is an institution, organization, or the government. I think the, the point that I should make is very valid, really. The government will have to spend money on cultural uh, development, cultural institutions. It is simply Suresh, the National <coughs> Museum of Delhi, I've been in the city now for 15 years. Will somebody please explain to me how I see the cultural policy of this country in the way the National Museum is run? But I should really care to explain. I think this is basically what... I mean, it's, it's, it's such a shoddy institution yes. that can... Let's not talk in these big, big terms of, you know, cultural policy and, I mean, they're very bright people, but I think they're wasting their time and energy uh, in trying to do policy. Just make sure at least that you can have cleanliness, a certain focus, a certain maintenance, a certain dynamism in one simple institution like the National Museum of this country and its capital. No, I, yeah, I, I think we're mixing up two things. I think ah, there's a like culture, culture and policy. art policy. There are two different things all together. No, culture is very large. Mainly, I think, uh, with the idea of kind of prioritizing areas which we need to look into. There are many dying art forms. We're not talking about just institutions. How do you prioritize those and save them? Because, you know, we go very ad hoc. With my five years of just being there, so I realize that uh, we have a lot of dreams to be able to kind of plan things, but then the funding is not coming in at the right time. So if some of the admin, as we are talking, some of the forms are really going to be extended. So I think the policy in terms of just kind of prioritizing areas which need immediate attention, which need long-term nurturing, that's what I would understand would be a cultural policy that we need to... No, let me answer it very briefly. National Museum in spite of the attempt of the government to get a proper director general, appointing search committees thrice, getting it out of the UPSC hold, <coughs> able to find a person. Yeah. Why? Because it has not been planned that we will need such people yeah. after yeah. some time. There's no training. There's so no there's no yeah. management yeah. training, yeah. culture yeah. management training. That will be an issue with the culture management and policy. Hands are one of them. Yeah. There are many things. And I, I think that you know, uh, this, is, this. Uh, this is the one point we can all agree on. And that is that whether it is in the area of 0 0.01 becoming 1, or whether it is a uh, uh, you know, finding, creating the structure for educating arts administrators and cultural managers, or whether it is simply honesty in fulfilling the goals that you set out with. And I have in mind the fact that the government has had this policy of 2% of a building's budget to be spent on art work for the last at least 25 no, there, years. No, it was there during Nehru's time. Right. Nehru's it's been time. there since then. Do you know that just two months ago, I was told by a senior functionary of the uh, Urban Arts Commission, you, you need to spend only about a few lakhs. I said, no, but we need to spend 2%. Two, two and uh, that would work up at least 10 lakhs. No, 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 nobody does that. Shanta, is corruption See? a cultural issue? Hundred percent. It is. Yes. Okay. So, so we can end policy? on this note that we've got to find ways of ensuring that public 
institutions fulfill the role that they are asked to do, carry out the laws that they are supposed to be carrying out. Be honest with that. That's not happening. This is a simple thing. How can an urban arts commission say this? But Shanta, it's been interpreted that the outer court of K is the beautification. I agree. I know what you mean, Daraji. But you know? that, that's the issue. I mean, that's really the, yes, the thing. Yeah, I just um, I like Jatinda's idea of uh, history of culture. Right. And I think if that somehow can be incorporated in the school curriculum, somebody will first have to write it. <laughs> One of but it's not a, it's not such a simple issue. No, yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's not. It's not. There are huge ideological problems yeah. there. Yeah. No, very little tracks. But yeah. it's required. There are cultural, cultural, I mean, everything uh, has to be addressed. How yeah. it will be done but is a difficult thing. Yeah. Yeah. But it has to be addressed. When children, when children grow up with a love of culture and their, uh, you know, ethnic arts and all, they will want to preserve it, they will want to look yeah. after the museum, yeah, no. they will take pride in it. But today there is no... Well, there uh, you are talking of cleanliness, or <coughs> it's, 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 it's all starts at home it's, and primary school. And yes, in but, school. Yeah, yeah. And we have a gap, huge gap there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So the history of culture, I think, is very, very... You important. see, when the India today and other institutions have been conflict, or politicians, there is that big people, they call it journalists. Do you know what they have for culture? Sarukha. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. So those are the things that we all need to be sensitive about. That you know, where this culture and all of this discussion and all this talk and all of this, you know, culminations and all that Culture is the basic mother's issue of everything. That's why I come back to things like sanskar and come back to our, you know, very very long heritage of so many wonderful arts. How can we possibly begin to appreciate them unless our young are talked about them? Absolutely. So is this all right that we, you know, yeah, we give our audience a chance now to uh, breathe freely and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. That's the thing. Uh, thanks once again and I don't know how to thank Shantaji for curating this wonderful discussion. Uh, uh, thank you Shantaji. Thank you Jatinda. Thank you uh, Mr. Vajpayee. And uh, thank you all. I'm very happy to see uh, Gita, Pratibha, people like Raji who are here, Rita Ji, and, and uh, all of you. Uh, and I see Lady here has come back uh, again once, again after the month. So as we, our next uh, thing will be on the next panel uh, dialogue is on 23rd of May. Of course, we'll send you mails. Local and global issue of cultural identity. Local versus global issues. You know, so we have touched about some. Whatever is left, we'll be happy to. Yeah, and we have Dr. Uh, Amrit, uh, Amrit Srivasan and Ambassador Lalit Man Singh to speak as speakers. Thank you, so thank thank you. you and look forward to seeing you.